<laughs> Welcome. How are you? Thank you. Doing? Well, I am very excited to have you here. Um, for those of you logging on, it's right at the top of the hour. So um, I know some people will be joining on, but I just want to talk real quick and introduce myself and talk about what we're doing here today. And then I'm going to introduce my special guest. So I'm Mr. Winsett, attorney and stylist, and I have started uh, doing these Facebook Lives on every Tuesday at 6 p.m. Central. And I, I realized that we need a, a forum where women can come together and discuss best practices, can talk about style, can talk about st stuff other than COVID-19. And um, so I, there's just a lot of things that we can do to help each other level up and um, rise up and rise each other up. So. Um, I'm super excited to uh, have introduced you to our special guest, Sarah Nell Walsh. And Sarah Nell is a, an executive coach. She, like me, is also an attorney, former practicing attorney, but she has now specialized in doing professional coaching. So, Sarah Nell, will you want to introduce yourself and tell us a little bit about your background and what you do? Sure. So, I am a professional certified coach and I work with high uh, performing women ambitious women who are really looking to punch above their weight class and level up their careers. So some of these women are looking to take it to the next level in terms of leadership or in terms of if you're in a law firm environment, making partner or making equity partner. And then also people also level up by transitioning, by transitioning into a job that's more aligned with the person or the lifestyle that they want to have, the person they want to be or the lifestyle they want to have. And so I have seen a lot of people during COVID making voluntary choices to leave their organizations because those organizations, either through their handling of the virus or through their handling of the Black Lives Matter movement, they no longer see their values as aligning with the values of their organization. And so I'm seeing a lot of movement right now with really high achieving folks who have a lot of choice and can vote with their feet about where they want to be and the type of organizations they want to work with. Absolutely. I love that. And, you know, they always say that the best time to decide to leave a place is when you're happy, not when you're miserable. So like you said, it's a matter of making a choice of what's going to be the best decision for you. Yeah, for sure. I love that. Awesome. Well, um, what I thought we would talk about today, I know that um, when we spoke earlier, you were talking about how a lot of your clients are um, doing Zoom interviews. And I know a lot of the people on uh, this call are maybe not necessarily doing Zoom interviews, but they're certainly doing Zoom appearances because we've all become overnight uh, celebrities <laughs> where we have to show up online. It's not optional. And, you know, you're not going to want to, uh, you want to start your video because, you know, if you're in a Zoom call and you've been invited to do that, if you don't start your video, it's like, uh, you're basically snubbing the, the group there. So you can't avoid it. You need to do it. And so since you have to do it, you might as well take the best practice steps that you can take to show up in your most powerful way. So um, I thought, and feel free to jump in here with me, so now, but I thought I would just go over some general Zoom tips and tricks that I think people would be interested in. Um, and so now, can you see the comments? I'm trying to see if I can get, I want to make sure if there are comments coming in I can check them, how about that, while you are talking. Oh, perfect, perfect, awesome, wonderful. So um, what I, uh, I've got a list of some things that I just wanted to go over, just general practice tips, and some of you guys may know all these, but it doesn't hurt to have a review and go over them. The first uh, practice tip is to make sure that your screen name is your professional name, first name and last name. I had a horrible, well, actually, it was pretty funny. Um, we've been doing attorney um, coffee chats and happy hours within my firm, my day job. And we had a, a call with our remote attorneys. And this was a group that really hadn't met each other previously. You know, we have the um, internal groups that have been doing coffee chats. But we put together all of the attorneys that were in little pockets of firms so that they could have a connection and meet with people. So during this first uh, meeting of all the remote attorneys, uh, one of the attorneys, uh, unbeknownst to him, had a um, screen name of Turd. <laughs> so he had put it on there because he had done a lot of Zoom calls with his family. And, uh, you know, it was just a joke. And I mean, he was laughing, but I think he's also sort of mortified. So, you know, you think that those little things, you're like, oh, surely that, that wouldn't happen to me. So anyway, make sure first day it last was you guys and it wasn't court. I mean, can right? you imagine if he had showed up for a court appearance and had his no. name? 
word? No, I know it was horrible. I mean, thankful we, we probably he probably dodged a bullet because of us in our um coffee chat <laughs> but yeah really? so screen name very important I mean just like your email address right I mean you're not gonna send a resume from you know hot chick at gmail.com or whatever but um check that <laughs> because how many of us have been doing zoom calls for personal things I know you've mentioned that didn't you have some birthday celebrations you've done on zoom we have. We've done a lot of personal Zoom calls. And even with um, the mastermind that we're both in, we do a lot of Zoom calls. And, you know, for those of you out there, a lot of the icebreakers for Zoom, they'll ask you to change your name. <laughs> yes. Is it a virtual retreat? And they asked us for, to change our name to like our childhood nickname, you know? And, um, and so when that happens, if you don't change it back before your next professional call, Someone would be like, hey there, little JJ, you know, how you doing? <laughs> it can be really embarrassing. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. Those little things that you don't think about, just, it's like they all add up, right? And if you're mm -hmm. trying to put your first, best first impression out there, you need to be thinking about it. Um, so the next thing I have on here is just to have a clean background. And I'm curious to know your thoughts on this, Darnell, but I am actually, unless it's a like company Zoom call, I'm pretty, not sure I'm liking the virtual backgrounds. I think they're too distracting. People move, you look like you're a robot, you can't see things. What are your thoughts about virtual backgrounds? Unless you have a green screen in your house, which some of my clients do, okay. I do not recommend a virtual background. It gives you this weird halo effect yes. around your head and the, and the borders are really kind of grainy. Yes. Um, also, some people are using animated virtual backgrounds which are really distracting, where like the beach is rolling in and out. Um, I've not seen that. You haven't? No. Oh yeah. Oh no. Um, well, I know when I had my hair in a ponytail and I had a virtual background, when I turned, like my head just looked funny. Like it totally changed how I looked and you know. It does. It was not, cool, but no. Not only does it distract your, the person you're speaking to, it can distract you. Yes. <laughs> and that's right? the last thing we want, right? Mm -hmm. I noticed that when I, I put on, they asked me to do a virtual background for one of the video conferences I was on and I had to turn it off. It was so distracting to me that yeah. I was like, I cannot deal with this. Definitely. Definitely. So I think that the best background is one that is uh, streamlined and clean. And I don't know if everyone's doing this. I finally started doing it as having a designated spot. So prior to COVID, I really didn't have a formal office. But since then, I have set up shop because who knows how long we're going to be here. And I think it's important, um, you know, and, and I guess it begs the question of, you know, how some people may not have that luxury to have a dedicated room that they can have as their office because they may have kids that are still working from home. But I still think creating a pocket, even if it's just a corner of the room where the wall's clean, you might put a picture, like I've got one in the background, or, uh, you know, some kind of lighting, um, just to have that clean background so that you look like you're you mean business you're coming in serious and that this is a you're taking this very seriously so I think that claiming your space is incredibly important and I think I disagree with you I think that no matter what kind of environment you live in you can find some corner of space to call your own oh yeah you know I have a client who has turned a walk-in closet in her bedroom master bedroom into her office and we call it her clothis um, I, I love it. Also did that. She wrote her first book in a clothis. And I'm like, if it's good enough for a New York Times bestselling author, it's good enough for us. Um, so being really creative, some kitchens have like that little kitchen bench work area that you could use. Um, it's not an office. It doesn't have a door, but at least you have a space that's yours that, as you said, you can designate, you can control the background and what it looks like. You can tell people to stay out of said space when you need to have a call. Um, if you're doing an interview, I do agree to do it from a designated space that you've tested before. But if you're talking to your colleagues, I think it's really great to try out different spaces in your home. This is a really unique time for them to get a little insight into your life. So I've taken calls. This is the other side of my desk. So I talked to, I talked to Estelle earlier today and I was sitting at my desk, but now I'm on the other side of my desk. And I switched that up. So during the day, I'm at my desk. But if I take an after hours call, I've been sitting at my desk all day. That's like the last place I want to be sitting now. Um, but I also take calls from my front porch. I take calls from my back porch. I take calls from my kitchen. Yeah. Um, 
So I move all over the house if I'm not on a business call. Right. No, I think that makes a lot of sense. And like you said, especially if you're doing something like a, a coffee chat or um, a happy hour and you're trying to get to know people, um, it, you know, people are so much more lenient and um, they understand if something happens to, if a kid comes in and you can't control that. <laughs> so right. even if you're at a, if you're at a happy hour for your business, like people love seeing each other's kids. Yeah. Um, or if you're in a networking group, you know, that can be really great to give people that insight into your life. Definitely. And then one item that I shared earlier um, that I think you were already uh, aware of was the whole touch up my appearance. I love that. So in the Zoom, uh, if you go, I, I wish I could share my screen to show this, but I can't. But if you look at the bottom bar of your Zoom, and I think I have a screenshot in my Facebook group for people to see, you can click on the arrow next to the stop video and allows you to click on video settings. Mm -hmm. And then under my video, there's touch up my appearance. Oh, you know what? I had it on non touch up. Hold on. I'm getting rid of some. Oh my Botox. gosh, you can give a real life demonstration. Virtual Botox. Look at that. I mean, my, my forehead looks like baby smooth. Look at that. I mean, that took like two seconds. Love it. Oh my gosh. I'd forgotten I had demonstrated the bad one. So, okay. Do your touch up your appearance. It's a, it's a gift. I love it. It's Any a kind of little gift you got, right? I like forget what I look like in real life. I like get off video calls and I go into the bathroom and I'm like, oh, who's that lady in the mirror? Oh wait, that's me. <laughs> totally, totally. Um, and then let's talk about lighting. So, um, you know, right now, well, and, and you and I discussed this earlier and I think this is an important point. Because we're in a situation where this could be, we could be here for a long time. I believe that it's important to go ahead and invest in things that are gonna enhance your appearance on screen and that includes lighting, uh, things that can help with the audio um, and those kinds of things because I think that it's gonna help you show up more powerfully which we talked about is super important um, and it also shows that you're taking this seriously as a professional. Um, yeah, so, to help you avoid tech blunders. You know, especially when you're talking about interviewing, so many companies want people who are tech savvy and understand tech issues and if they're looking at people being home through the middle of 2021 and you kind of can't pull it together for your half an hour yeah. interview, yeah. that might not bode so well for you, right? Exactly, exactly. So what I'm using right now, um, and it, so you want to have the lighting facing you, so behind your computer as opposed to behind you. Um, right. And, you know, the best lighting is natural light. So if you can put your desk in front of a window, um, that's amazing. But one thing that I've added is um, it's called Loom Cube. Have you heard of this? I have. It's awesome. So the picture shows you right there. It's just this little thing that you put on the back of your um, computer. And um, I'm going to go ahead and like you can turn it down um, and turn it up, you know, and it, you know, when you're wearing glasses, you have to have the right angle. Um, so anyway, lighting is super important. Um, what about you, Sir Nell? Any lighting tips that you've done? No, so being front lit is really important. Not being back lit is really important. So you see people often, they'll be in front of like their patio doors and you can't see their face and there's nothing they can do to change that. Yep. Um, and that again, just doesn't show up really well, even if it looks really pretty for them in person. Um, but making sure that your camera is at eye level, yep. eye contact is so important for yep. maintaining human connection. Yes. And so you don't feel, so then you don't look at the screen when you're talking, you actually look at the camera. Yes, which feels so weird, right? I mean, uh, you're looking at this inanimate object, but the other person feels like you're looking at them. Right. And so that's really important for building connection, especially by video. And yep. that's super counterintuitive, um, but it's so important. Definitely. And, and one tip that I have is to put a little post-it note right by my camera so I can see it. Just oh. it up. look here, look here. Cause I have the, I'm the worst at that. I get so distracted, like looking at the screen versus looking here. Um, so yeah, post-it note is really helpful. And that's why testing your technology is so important because yes. you want to know, is your camera showing up grainy? Is yes. your audio showing up echoey, right? And so testing these things before you have a big meeting, before you have a big video conference, before you have a big interview, before you have a big court appearance, right? Making yeah. sure you have all of that nailed down so that you don't have to worry about the tech blunders when you're coming into a big event. Absolutely. And that kind of brings me to my next point about internet. So I just recently set up this desk setting that I'm telling you about. And my husband hardwired it so I don't have to do Wi-Fi. 
but you and I were talking earlier. Can you tell uh, everyone a little bit about your trick, about what you've come up with? Because I think it's brilliant. Yeah, so I had a huge video conferencing blunder, which is what spurred me to do on my um, Facebook Live, a Facebook Live on video conferencing do's and don'ts, because I had lived the video conferencing don't, and it was so painful. So I was doing a um, training for a large multinational law firm, and I had 60 women on the line, and my internet went out. Uh, Nightmare. The internet had gone out like all over the neighborhood. It wasn't like just my internet went out, right? Yeah. Um, so Wi-Fi wouldn't have even helped me in that situation. But what it taught me is if I'm going to be doing something really important, again, court appearances, interviews, presentations to large numbers of people, I now have a hotspot that I keep on my desk. So if that happens again, I have redundancies. I have a backup system that I can use. Yes. Because it took me like seven minutes to uh, get back in. And luckily I didn't lose any of my participants and everyone was so gracious. But I was mortified. That's a way to rattle you for sure, right? Mm -hmm. um, and I think it's important to remember that tech happens and, and you know, try not to get flustered when that happens because you know, inevitably something is probably gonna happen. But having those safeguards in place, like the hotspot, um, really can help you um, to, to feel ready. Um, but again, I think just, oh, let me, let me take care of that. You know, I learned, I remember uh, when I first started practicing, there was an attorney that I worked for. He was super smooth. I mean, he was the best in, you know, in front of a jury. And I remember there were times when I was watching him because we had the luxury back in the day, at least I did, to shadow and do a lot of that and see the experts in action. And I remember he was given his opening statement and he flipped something over. And if the same thing had happened to me, I would be like, oh, I'm so sorry. Oh, hold on, excuse me. And he was just like, yeah, anyway, we'll, we'll get that. And just like carried on. And I was just like, you're my idol. You know, if you can figure out a way that to know that this is going to happen, but not let it rattle you, um, you know, just try that because it, it really makes a huge difference. And what that comes with is practice. Yeah. So the more that you can get comfortable with the technology, the more that you can practice. And, you know, if you're going to be doing an online court appearance, especially practice with your associates, practice with your mom, practice with your sister, right? It doesn't even have to be, you can practice by videotaping yourself yep. on your cell phone or on Zoom. It doesn't have to be in front of even an audience, but to get comfortable with seeing yourself in the little picture, with looking at the camera, and then to be able to watch it back and to see how it plays, Yep. is so important, not because you want to memorize what you're going to say, right? But because you're going to be more comfortable with the technology and also with the way you're presenting yourself if you have an opportunity to practice. Exactly. I 100% agree on that. Um, there's so many times you think that you do something a certain way, but then when you actually watch it back, you realize, oh, I didn't say it quite the way I thought I wanted to. Oh my gosh. For my coaching program, we had to do audio listens um, and then we had to get transcripts. Ooh. <laughs> yeah. it, I hated it, getting the deposition transcripts back with the ums and the okay and uh-huh. And I was like, oh, why do you have to put that in there? <laughs> I know. It is very humbling to have to watch yourself back and then have someone being like, okay, right here. And you're like, ah. <laughs> Cringy. Totally. I'm like, keep the perfectionist right out of you. <laughs> Definitely. Definitely. And then another thing that I do is um, I have a webcam that I just got as a Logitech and it just goes on the top of my screen. I think it helps with a couple of different things. I think it helps with the quality of the picture and also sound. Um, I think you can get them for around 70 bucks. Do you have anything like that, Sarah? Now? I don't, you know, I have a Surface Pro and I had an exterior webcam and I really feel like my Surface Pro camera is better than the exterior webcam that I bought. Nice. So unless I'm doing something um, where I'm doing a presentation and I want like a wide, a wider screen um, or I want to be able to zoom in or I want to be able, so my camera, like you can, you've got a little remote. And so if I like have an easel next to me, I could like scan it back and forth. Unless I want to do something like that, I really just use the, the camera on my, um, on my computer. Nice. And then for audio. So I have, bought a while back um, this really inexpensive lavalier microphone. Ooh, fancy. Right? I mean, it sounds good. I think it was $19, but anyway, <laughs> it sounds good, right? It sounds very mm -hmm. official. 
Um, but you can just plug it right into um, your laptop. And what I do, you know, it has this whole little thing. I just set it down next to the laptop and it picks up the sound. It just makes it a little bit clearer. But my son, so my children are complete techie people. And um, I also ordered another speaker that my son was like, why did you even get that? And so my 15 year old brought down this, um, it's, a, it's a blue, um, hold on a second, uh, blue snowball. So it's like the same maker of blue Yeti but it's um, a snowball and it's got this little, it's, it's pretty impressive looking actually. So I've, I've tried it. Look, it's got this little thing uh -huh. and um, this little makes, takes out the uh, background ambient noise. But um, there are different things you can try out ranging in prices. I wanna say that one, since I borrowed it from my son, <laughs> was free. But I think if you bought it <laughs> online, it would probably be around 70 bucks, I think. And then like I said, the lavalier was maybe 20 bucks from Amazon. Um, but you and I were talking also about the noise counseling. I'd love to hear your perspective on um, how to handle reducing background noise. Yes, so I don't have any of those fancy things. I just <laughs> use the, um, the microphone on my, um, on my Surface Pro. But I will say that I invested about $400 in some Bose 700 noise canceling headphones. Nice. And they have been a lifesaver, not only for me, but during virtual school to be able to pop them on someone else. I posted a famous, uh, 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 posted a picture on Instagram famously of my daughter right outside my doors when I was working dancing and she had like music blaring in the noise canceling headphones, nice. but no one could hear it. Right. Um, and so they've really been a lifesaver for us. But if you have a lot of background noise, especially if you have an infant in the house, where, you know, things happen. Like you just, you can't control that. These noise canceling headphones have the noise canceling for you on the headphones so that you're not distracted by thinking about like, oh no, what's going on in there? What happened? Is there a fever, right? And also because it has a noise canceling microphone. And so the people on the other end of your call are also not being um, bombarded by the barking dogs um, and the screaming children right. and, the, I mean, one of my clients today, her daughter is in fourth grade and she's crying oh, because no. online yeah. school and like second day and like super hard, right? Right. Um, and so that's when you can pop on those noise canceling headphones so that you can focus on what you're doing. Um, if you've got an important meeting or you have an interview, you don't want to be distracted by what's going on in your home life. Definitely. Definitely. And really kind of when the last thing, well, actually a couple more points before we go into the substantive prep. But yeah. I talked also, I heard in my notes about doing the mock interview because, I mean, even if it's for five minutes, just to see the setup, you know, if I hit this button, how am I coming across, uh, you know, what can someone tell me or just is distracting about what I'm doing, you know, in an interview, I mean, you're, and all you're seeing is the top part. So it's super critical to uh, work on any ticks you might have or anything that's distracting and having another person to give you that feedback is super helpful. And then the other point, that I wanted to mention is if you have a court appearance or an interview, one thing you may not have thought about is to stand up while you're giving the presentation. And you can put your, um, you can just configure like a laptop table. You were saying you have one that's adjustable that can just put the um, laptop higher. When you do that, it's almost like if you were standing at the podium in court giving an oral argument, you're just gonna feel, um, you're gonna take a different presence and stance and it's gonna help you show up more powerfully. And if you normally wear heels, wear heels. Yep, right? absolutely. Like show up as you would normally because that is going to send muscle memory to your brain that you're going to show up differently than you would if you didn't have those heels on. Um, another thing to think about in terms of the practice is that when you show up on video, you show up about 25% less magnetic or energetic as you're going to show up in person. And yep. so you kind of got to pump it up a little bit. And that's where this practice or mock interviews or mock court appearances can really help you so that you can figure out where that line is, right? You don't want to show up like a coked up werewolf, right. but you do want to show up as your best self, as your most energetic self. Yep. If you're a super optimistic person, but you get nervous when you're in interview situations or when you're in court situations, you might show up as a really muted version of who you are. Yep. Um, you might not be the best culture fit for the organization you're working with if they think they're hiring 
you know, a bookworm and they're hiring the life of the party. So you really do want to try and show up authentically as yourself. Also, make sure that you eliminate distractions. Put your phone in the drawer. Shut all the windows on your computer, right? Yep. Don't be getting those pop-up notifications about emails coming in. Um, all of those things can really throw you off your game, and they are not things that would be present if you were personally at a court appearance or personally at an interview. And so it's just so important that you try to create the same container or the same environment that you would be in in, in real life yep. in this virtual world. Definitely. And one thing I've started doing before I get on a call with a client, um, because like I, I totally agree with you about the 20% energy uh, com not coming across when you're on the um, actual video recording. I started listening to music and I find songs that get me excited. Like Try Anything was, uh, I forget the name of the movie that that's in, but that's one of my favorite ones. Yeah. Shakira. Like, yeah, Shakira, right? You find like it's you. You're like, that's right, you know, or all I do is win, win, win. So if I said that was one, it's like, whatever it is for you, you know, do that, have that pre-video uh, ritual where you're, you're getting there on time, you've gotten yourself, you've looked at yourself in the, um, you've seen it on the camera, you're looking okay, and then you got the psychological advantage because you've listened to a song that makes you feel good. So. Yeah, and any practice that you have that centers you, especially mm -hmm. if you're going into an interview where you can quiet your mind, you can forget about what's going on at home, what kind of hot mess is happening in the rest of your house, exactly. you can forget about the dumpster fire that's going on at work, right? Oh. And you can just be fully present in the moment and react to what's happening now mm -hmm. is such a skill and it will set you apart both in court in meetings yep. and also in interviews. 100%. Well, now I want to talk a little bit about prepping for the interview in terms of substantively, how do you go about getting yourself ready to handle any questions you might have? So um, what would you say when you're getting ready? Well, first of all, what are your quick tips for um, making sure you have covered the ground and doing your research before an interview? So if you know who you're interviewing with, obviously do some research on them. Look them up, not only on LinkedIn or on their company website, Google them. Yeah. Stalking, this is a situation where stalking is totally okay. Yes. Right? So look them up, try and find out as much about them and about their role as, in the company as you can. If you don't know who you're interviewing with specifically, find out as much about the firm or the company you're going to be interviewing with as you can. And here's a great tip, having been on the other side of many, many interviews at my law firm, interviewees would very frequently research the firm as a whole, but not our office. And so they would come in, come in saying they wanted to practice in practice areas that were on our firm website, but that our specific office didn't have. Yep. So... If you're doing your research, make sure that you're researching the location that you want to work at, um, especially if it's a multi-location organization. Um, and as you're doing this research, really think about what information do I need to know to make this a hell yes or a hell no? Because ultimately you get to decide. Yes, they get to decide too, but just because they want you, so many people look at it as like winning. And they're like, oh, I need to win this job, right? right? But they end up miserable at job after job because they are being reactive and they are taking the jobs that are offered to them and they are form fitting or shape shifting into whatever that particular organization wanted. And they are not thinking, is this going to be a good fit for me? Yep. Does it meet my values, my criteria, the things that I'm looking for in my next position? So I really try to get people thinking about what are your ranges? What questions can you ask or what information do you need to make it, yes, I want to go on to the next round. I'm 100% enthusiastic. I want to wear your company t-shirt. Right. <laughs> no, there is no amount of money that you could pay me or there is a very high improbable amount of money that you could pay me to come work at your organization. And so that's the prep work I want my clients to do before they go into an interview. Absolutely. And I think the other point that you bring up too is, um, you know, trust your gut. 
if you're seeing red flags everywhere, or someone says something, you're like, oh, you know, like trust that because it's not just, they're not just interviewing you, you're interviewing them. So really sure. important point there. Well, what about, um, how do you prepare for the dreaded, tell me about your biggest weakness question? What, what advice do you have? Yeah, this is one that does get asked frequently. Um, and I think that the best way to answer it is to be as specific about the role as possible. So you go back to the job description and in any job description you don't have, or let me say this, you shouldn't have 100% of the qualifications. If you're applying for a job where you have 100% of the qualifications, you are overqualified. Yep. Right? Definitely. So if you have 80% of the qualifications, 20% of that is your growth area. And those are your learning edges. And so when someone asks you, what's your biggest weakness? I like to kind of shift it and say, well, based on this job description, what's going to be most challenging for me is, and then you can talk about the specific role and you can really show your growth mindset about here, this is going to be challenging. And this is kind of how I plan to overcome it. Or these are the strengths that I can lean on in overcoming this challenge. Yep. And it just gives you a better framework than like listing some sort of immutable characteristic um, that people might be like, I don't want someone who's disorganized or I always never get up in the morning. Not a good one to use. Yeah. <laughs> I'm um, time to sleep in. And also no one wants to hear like, I'm just too perfect. Oh, for goodness. Stop. If you've ever right? said that, don't say it again. <laughs> I, I'm overly responsive. I'm just, right? I'm just too awesome. Yeah. You might not be able to handle me. Oh. Great. I'm like, I've interviewed plenty of those law students and, oh, let yeah. me and oh, they yeah. showed up. They Definitely. had plenty of learning edges they could have talked about. Well, and you mix, I mean, yeah, totally agree. You know, in my former life, I was the Dean of Career Services at the law school here in Memphis and tried to help students prepare for our interviews. And um, you, you bring up such a good point too about uh, drawing attention to the particulars of that particular job interview or job description. If you're saying, well, I understand that this role requires that you um, have an understanding of Excel and I, I, well, I've dabbled in it. I, I don't know that I have the proficiency that it looks like this job requires. When you're going into something like that, it's really showing to them that they understand what well, you understand what the responsibilities are. You've taken the time to really study their job description. Um, and then it's not just uh, you're, you'll interview anyone and everyone, you know, it's focusing on them, which is what they want. Right. They want to feel like you're focusing on them. Yeah. And you're showing them that you're paying attention and that you can grow and develop, that you are willing to learn, which is what every organization says they want. Yeah. Um, so it shouldn't be held against you. Definitely. Definitely. And um, before I kind of get into the what to wear, and I know we're getting a little, let me know if I'm, uh, if you've got to be somewhere because I know we've gone a little bit over. And I won't be respectful. Okay. All right. Right. Well, before we get into kind of the, the uh, what to wear, are there any other uh, aspects we haven't covered that you think that we should about being prepared for an interview on Zoom? You know, I think that you really need to be careful of your um, signaling and also how you, uh, your nonverbal communication. Yep. So um, this is again where practice comes into effect, but if you tend to be someone who talks over people, um, it can be really challenging in a Zoom environment because it's harder to read the room. Um, and so signaling before you speak, you'll notice that I tend to do that, that I tend to kind of like put my hand up. So the other person knows that I'm gonna speak. I'm on Zoom five hours a day, like, yeah. right? But it's almost like traffic signaling so that people right. know what to do. Like the bikers who do their hand signals? Yeah, I mean, really. Yeah. Um, and so I think that that's really helpful in terms of like, how you interact so that you don't come across differently than you would in person. Yes. Um, I also think it's really important to answer the question that is asked. So if That's someone- you wish they asked? <laughs> right. If someone, Sorry, asks, <laughs> if someone asks you a question, what is the most concise way that you can answer that question? Because that is the information that they're soliciting. And if you don't answer it, you might take yourself out of the running if that is one of the matrix, like these companies have these matrices for assessing candidates. And if you don't check the box on that because you didn't answer the question, you're really like kind of setting yourself back. And so as lawyers, that's something we should be good at, right? Because we tell witnesses that all the time. Deposition. Ask the answer and then explain. Yeah. 
<laughs> we're not very good at it because we like to shape the narrative. And so we think we know what they do want to hear um, and might not be as good about answering the question that's asked. And then my last tip goes back to kind of the beginning, which is show up authentically. So you don't want to work somewhere where you can't show up as yourself. And so you are setting yourself up for failure if you are starting off acting as someone else. And so when, if you are in a Zoom interview, this might be different if you're in a court appearance, right? But like, if you're in a Zoom interview, make sure that you're showing up as, yes, your best self, but that you're authentically showing up as who you are. Absolutely. 100% agree. Well, I'm going to talk a little bit now about just what to wear. Um, and, uh, Sarnell, if you happen to look and see if we have any questions, I've been kind of, it's been kind of, I have not seen any. There are a lot of highs from all oh, our friends. Oh, good. No question. Hello. Okay. Awesome. Wonderful. Okay. Well, um, so just real quick, I'm going to talk about a few, um, style tips, um, that I think are helpful when you're trying to figure out what to wear. Number one, um, I think for tops, V-necks are, I'm trying to see my camera so you can kind of see my top a little bit. V-necks are pretty much universally flattering. Um, a lot of women will talk to me. I was on a call the other day where someone was saying, you know, I have a larger chest and I don't want to accentuate that in an interview. And if, if that's you and you wear, say, a boat neck or something that is higher up, it's just going to basically accentuate the fact that you have a larger chest. But pretty much any um, body type can handle a V-neck. And it's just going to, um, showing a little bit of skin, it's just, uh, it breaks up the picture because, you know, you're on this little bobblehead and it just kind of adds a little, you know, breaks up the picture a little bit. And I like, I'm just wearing a little simple uh, pendant. You can do pearls. Um, the trick when you're wearing a V-neck is to, um, if you want to add jewelry, and I think for an interview or a Zoom call, something simple is great, is you want to um, fill this negative space. So, you know, here you've got, here's, it just kind of, and if you can do it in the same line as the, um, the neckline, that's really um, flattering and um, a good way to use jewelry. Um, you don't want to do anything too, um, especially in an interview, I would, cause I would say be a little conservative, <laughs> you know, you don't want to um, wear, you know, your bright pink uh, earrings that you might wear on the weekend. Nothing wrong with that. I have tons of that, but for the interview, choose a little bit more of a conservative Thing, but jewelry is nice um, and you'll see you know I'm wearing my fun glasses I think there's nothing wrong with wearing glasses that have a little bit of your personality in there um, you know I might if it's something that's super distracting like you know some of those glasses that are super dark rimmed you know that might be taking away from you know you're talking then you want to be careful of that but I think you can play with your personality with things like uh, with these glasses that I have on and then I always recommend I'm going to put it on so you can see the difference but um, I always recommend that you wear a jacket um, especially in a court appearance. And you'll just see that just that one little addition, it just um, makes it look a little bit more tied together. It elevates the look. So I would definitely recommend um, wearing a, a, a layer, whether it's a jacket or not. And I think for a you know, court appearance, a jacket or an interview, a jacket is what you're going to want to do. I'm trying to think if there's anything else. Oh, we talked about uh, background. So you don't want to clash with your background. So in most cases, I actually recommend a white blouse because the color will lighten up your face. But if you have a white wall, then you don't want to do that. Then you're going to be this floating head and no one wants a floating head. Um, so, you know, just be mindful of your background and make sure that there's nothing clashing. But in general, for an interview, I would say, you know, neutral is better. Solids are better. Um, I mean, if you have a print that's not busy, that's okay too. Um, but you want to be careful of how it shows up on video. If you have a um, pattern that's maybe a zigzaggy, it can, you know, you have, when you look in those little like things with the circles and it makes this like weird movement, you gotta be careful of how it's translating on the video. And that's when you do the mock interview, it's really helpful because you can see, is anything I'm wearing distracting or making, you know, taking away from really what I'm trying to say, because that's the most important piece of, um, you know, when you're showing up for these interviews or if you're doing um, say a court appearance. And I think those are kind of the main pieces that I wanted to add about dressing up. You know, a lot of it is very personal and I work with clients one-on-one -on -one and we kind of figure that out. And um, I actually just recently have started doing um, Zoom makeovers. So if anyone is interested and kind of like thought about working with a personal stylist, but didn't want to um, pay, you know, for the complete overhaul. So I've got an offer and I'll put a link in the comments for $1.99. But as a Zoom makeover, we get on a call, you show me what it is you're wanting to wear. And then we do a 10 minute trial run. 
where you hop on to my Zoom call and I can see, okay, is everything you do like the, the dry run, you got the outfit on, is it working? Um, so that's one thing that I've started offering just to new clients because it's something that's super important right now. So It's so important and I would totally recommend that to my clients who are interviewing to have a second set of eyes yeah. um, to, to see because if you have that one outfit that makes you feel super good about yourself, you're going to show up differently. And I think we talked about this before, but y'all, wear your pants. Oh my gosh, I forgot to talk about the pants. Wear please, your pants. Please wear pants. Yo, please. I'm wearing, you can wear comfortable pants. Like I have on um, just some black, uh, you can't really see it. I'm sorry, I'm not doing a good job of this. But you can find comfortable pants that, I mean, what, what, you know, what if you have to get up and find something that a court's asking you? Pick it up. I mean, Oh my gosh, Sarah, didn't you say you were, someone was talking about where they had a, a, a man walked by, got up and he was in his boxers? Yeah, so our, our friend was on a court appearance in family court with the judge on the call and the judge asked him for something and he got up and went to the printer and he was in his boxers, y'all. Like you, and the judge was like, John, pull it together. Like the judge like, knew him, together. like everyone on the call knew him. Like that is mortifying. That cannot happen in an interview. I mean, it is almost better for that to happen in a court appearance than in an interview. I hate to say that, but like, um, because all those lawyers talk y'all and you, you might not get another one. No kidding. No kidding. I mean, and who was it? The uh, Schwarzenegger, the speaker or the, uh, the news reporter who was sitting in his box search and you could see the very bottom of his, of his box search on the screen. It's like, come on, you know, Really. And, you know, as you and I talked about earlier today, I mean, it translates into how you feel about yourself. When you are looking good and you are looking the part, you're going to show up differently than if you've got on your PJs underneath your um, suit top. It's just, you're not going to feel as professional and put together because you aren't. <laughs> and it translates the message, not only in this sense, I talk about this so much, that, you know, it's not just the message you're sending someone else, it's the message you're sending yourself. That well, is, and it goes back to that muscle memory, right? Like we look a certain way, the, it's, it's the reason that schools require uniforms. Yeah. Like when you look a certain way, you act differently. And so if you typically, like we were talking about this today, but I have a client and her big signal that she's at work is she puts shoes on. Yeah. Now I don't do that because I took my shoes off when I worked in big law and walked around barefoot. So like right. I'm, I'm showing up the same at home as I did in my big time law firm. But but for her, that's really like a symbol because she would have never done that. She's a designer. She's very put together. And so when she's working at home, she has her shoes on. So whatever signals to your brain, right, that you are at work and that this is when you are performing at your highest and your best, yep. that is what you want to be wearing from head to toe. And if that means pantyhose, y'all, that means pantyhose. That means whatever you got to do. Absolutely. Absolutely. Couldn't agree more. <laughs> well, um, thank you so much, Sarah Nell, for coming on. I apologize that we went a little bit long, but this was too much fun and I enjoyed it. So fun. And I can't wait to share it on my Facebook page. And um and will you please make sure that you send me that link so that I can share that with my audience as well? Because I really do think this is such a great service that you're providing Absolutely. Um, to your community. It yeah, and anyone who's watching this on the replay, share it uh, with your friends who have, you know, I'm sure you're talking to friends and family who might have interviews coming up or they're worried about um, a special event that they have to be on Zoom. You know, share these tips. We hope that um, we can help other women show up and be badasses because that's really our mission. I think uh, Sarah Nell and I are both uh, on board on that, that that's really what's important to us and, and why we do what we do. So We just need to elevate one another because the old boys club is not working for us. And so it is time that we created our own club and yep. that co-elevate so that we can all perform at our best and no one else's success threatens ours. That's so right. like everyone, right? Like everyone can be game. better yep. together. Oh man, preach sister. I'm with you. <laughs> Take care. Thank I can't you. wait to talk to you again. All right. Bye everyone. Bye,